Hello and good day everyone, how's it going? I'm Sean David, thanks for tuning in. In today's episode, we got a very special guest in the house, NBA champion, John Spidercelli. John, how you doing, man? Hey, thank you, Sean. Thanks for having me, man. I've been waiting long enough to get my t-shirt, Beyond Meat, Go Vegan. Just telling you that before we even get going. Your health is your wealth. More on that on johnsally.com. Now, John, you played against some of the best players of all time. And I recently talked to a former teammate of yours, Dennis Rotman, who told me, which I really found funny, that when he came into the NBA and he played against one of my favorite players, Larry Bird, that Larry used to school him in his first years. Now, you being a great defender yourself, playing for the Bad Boys, what was it like for you playing against Larry Bird, a player that is considered to be very slow, who couldn't jump what was your experience like they would say that and i would be like i don't think they're playing against the same guy i'm playing against because uh he was quick to get around you and quick to talk smack to you and quick to put two points in your face and he, if he needed to he could dunk when he did but he realized why should i jump up and dunk when i'm just wanting to put the ball in the basket Now, John, you always came across to me as one of the guys who's always honest, brutally honest. So I will ask you something, and I hope you will uh, remain the same way. Uh, now, I heard, I have good sources, I heard that the practices that you guys had with the bad boys were very competitive. So I know that even teams that have, let's say, good guys on uh, mostly on the team still had fights in practice. John, who do you fight in practice? Bill and Bill. Of I course. Fight with, but I've always wanted, you know, everybody wants to fight Bill and Bill. I learned a lot from Bill and Bill. I learned a lot. Um, uh, everything about Bill and Bill in my career has been a learning lesson. So I appreciate that for Bill and Bill. But it gets to the point where, you know, and it's funny. He doesn't do cheap shots. Like everybody would say he was a cheap shot artist. He's just a bit, he's not. He's like big 6'11", and when he puts that big lug of ham on you, and when you go to jump and he puts his hands forward, or he botches you out, it, it's, it's it just, he was annoying. He was annoying. Okay, but I think you have a definition of uh, cheap shots. Um, you mean he doesn't hide his fouls, he makes it obvious. <laughs> well... You, if you're going to foul somebody, you should foul them. Yeah. You shouldn't foul them and turn into like Divac and be like, oh my God, the world's about to end. You know, I, I'm looking like I'm, a, I'm an Italian player in Italy. No, ref, no. Uh, <laughs> uh, you know, they, they want to complain. I didn't barely touch him. No. What would happen if he was going to foul you, he wouldn't dislocate anything. Most of the fouls were reaching and hitting, reaching for the ball really hard or pushing you out of the way. And people didn't like that. I'm telling you, you can check all the films. This, oh, this hey, I have a compilation of Bill and Beer fouls, so I know how he fouled. There, there was no hiding whatsoever. He made it so obvious. And still, the players didn't get the calls, but that's a different story. But it's, interest, <laughs> it's interesting. Everybody wanted to fight Bill and Beer and, and, yeah, even his teammates. So thanks for that story, because I haven't heard that before. Now, John... Um, When you won your first championship, I mean, you you are a four-time NBA champion. Um, did any championship come close to the first time winning the championship, beating the Los Angeles Lakers, the great Los Angeles Lakers? Well, nothing is ever going to be like the first time of anything. So the first time of anything is always going to be the best. And the reason it is uh, because it's something you've never had before. So you get to that championship, you start thinking of when you played back in grade school and junior high school and high school and college and, and all those seasons, if you if you played a bunch of seasons up to that point of being crowned the best in the world. So it, it's, it's that one first time when you get, um, uh, I guess, knighted as... You get knighted from the queen. You're like, you are now a knight. Now you cannot be a knight. So it's the cool thing. But uh, the championship with Chicago Bulls, because it was the first time I got to sit back and watch. I played a little bit, but I didn't play like I did in my first two championships. And I got to watch from the greatest seat on the planet, the greatest player in Michael Jordan play. 
So I had the, I had the best career. I got to hang out with him, smoke cigars with him, uh, uh, and win championships with him. You know, I'm I'm very very happy in all honesty that you finally say that MJ is the goat. Like seriously, it, it, it's super weird, but it, it was a relief for me to hear that you finally say it because I know you've been teasing people and you enjoyed enjoyed saying all this weird stuff to 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 tease people. And I'm happy that you finally admit that MJ is the goat. Thank you very much. <laughs> <laughs> But let me tell you, I text I text the guy Stephen A. Smith, who's on First Take ESPN here in the state, and I said, "Okay, it's 2020. I might as well just come real with it. He's the greatest of all time." Yeah, I said it, and he just put laughing faces because he knew I would say it just to ruffle everybody's feathers. You you know, you just have to. You just the, the truth can be questioned, and I can anybody can throw stats. But you know, MJ laughed at it all the time. He said, "Sal, leave these people alone, man." And I just be like, "Nah, man, I'm gonna get all in it." He, we would laugh at this. Well, I, 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 I believe you because I could see in your face how much you were enjoying giving those answers. Like uh, every single video where you were saying those things, you could really see, okay, he is enjoying to give those kind of answers. But that's you, and that, that's why I love you, man. Um, Thank you, man. Now. Since your team, the Bad Boys, were to me the, the most physical team in NBA history, I have a question for you. Who was the one guy that even your team would not mess with? That, well, that has to be somebody. Well, no. <laughs> Matter of fact, there's no one. Like, we had this thing that we was going to come into your town and drink up all the drink and uh, smoke up all the smoke and party with all the party and then beat you the next night. So we had fear of no one. I, I tell you personally, um, I, I'm not, fear is a hard word, uh, but I was very concerned when I had to face Akeem Olajuwon. That really? Was, yeah, man. If anybody, this is so funny, they're not going to do a documentary on, on Dream. They're just not. Yeah, that's But terrible. they really should. They sh really should because Akeem Olajuwon was the hardest person to guard and one of the best athletes ever. It's like he and Dennis Rodman came from brother, sister planet. Because Dennis Rodman's not from this planet. Akeem Olajuwon and Michael Jordan invented the universe. So these guys are on different planets. You know, I, I love your real talk. I'm I'm like the biggest Hakeem Olajuwon fan whatsoever. I always get into arguments because I always say, and I know it's a far reach, but to me, Hakeem Olajuwon is the best big who ever played. Just simple, sim the simple fact that he was able to, to not only block your shot, he was able to switch pick and rolls and guard the guard for for a few um, for a few steps. Um, he could literally do everything but dribble. And and this is this is funny. Uh, Akeem Olajuwon's game so imagine his game and how strong his back was and how he can shoot the ball on a twist and how his footwork was that's LeBron James I tell people LeBron is 6'11 265 pounds with 9% body fat or 12% body fat It, Akeem Olajuwon touching his back was like touching the wall and then he would turn around and look at you with those With those, with those eyes and be like, I am going to kill you right now. Uh, it was a tough guy to guard. Kevin McHale, so tough. Kevin McHale came in the game one time smelling like garlic. I was like, yo, man, what's up with the garlic smell? <laughs> <laughs> You're going to get 40 points tonight unless somebody throws you in a shower. Uh, Ke Kevin looks like like the sort of guy who did that on purpose, but that that's <laughs> probably Kevin. Now, now, John, um, one thing that I always wanted to ask you, um, you were actually playing for the Toronto Raptors in, in I think it was 1995, at a time where nobody wanted to play in Toronto. 95. Was that a favor for Isaiah or did you really want to go there in all honesty? Hey guys, watch out for the second part of the interview with me and NBA legend John Sally. Don't forget to hit that subscribe button and I'll see you next time on the Basketball Time Machine.